Good morning, photographers. I'm your host, Mr. Gramland, again, coming at you with more photography knowledge. All right, today we are getting into the principles of design. Now, in our grand metaphor, we have talked about uh, when we learn a language, we need to learn the words, the vocabulary, and then we need to put those words together to make sentences. And then we want to make nuanced compositions with those sentences, like stories and and uh, poetry and, and things like that. And the better that we can describe, evaluate, analyze and interpret the better we can get at art and the more we can identify the more we do that the better we get at it and the more that we go through all of that and learn more see more uh, the better we become and as always if you get out into the world and you photograph you photograph uh, beautiful things put yourself into the world put yourself in front of the amazing things find the amazing things even in the small um, and sometimes in insignificant you will become a better photographer and the more that you take pictures and think about all the things that you're learning in this class the better you will come I guarantee you okay so let's jump into it let's talk about principles of art so in the principles of art um, we are talking about unity, variety, proportion, movement, pattern, rhythm, balance, and emphasis. Now, unity um, has to do with the similarities or harmony within an image. Now, unity and variety work in a spectrum. So if you have more unity, it says one thing. And if you have more variety, it says another thing. So if you think about this, you know, you're unifying these pictures according to an element. You're unifying this picture according to the shape of a hat. There's a lot of hats here. You know, you might recognize, wow, these all these rocks are kind of bluish color. You're recognizing the unity that's created by the element color. And um, you're also recognizing that many of these shapes are similar. You know, they're rocks. You could actually find, you know, if you're at a rocky beach, you can find um, as many rocks as you can that are the exact same color and size and then like lay them in a perfect grid pattern and that kind of emphasizes it and you're creating more unity you know what if you took all these people's hats off and you laid them in a perfect grid or something like that or a perfect line you know you're creating even more unity you can see a bunch of these are actually matchbooks um, there's so much unity here that you just kind of appreciate the lines and it's all pointing inward and you're like, what is that? What is that? There's a sense of ambiguity because we don't necessarily see the world so ordered every day. And then you recognize, oh, these are matches. You know, what is this? Oh, that's like a, that's a culvert, you know? So it's like a storm drain. You know, these feathers these boats you're looking for things if you're focusing on unity you're looking for things that bring more similarity together you know consistent shape consistent color consistent form consistent value consistent uh, whatever the element might be you know or a similarity you know this is almost funny how did we get funny how do we create a meaning when we see two similar things you know we automatically think oh maybe this maybe this bird thinks this is another bird isn't that funny you know but it's funny in our similarity or maybe you find like a jagged rock face that has a similar shape as someone's face and you have their face in the foreground right there or something like that variety is the other end of the spectrum difference or contrast with an image so you have lots of maybe different things you know this big orange area next to a big blue area or you have um, lots of things lots of different things in here so you have a lot of different colors and kind of coming together but there's some similarities too because they're all the same shape You have a variety of objects on a table here. You have a variety of people. You have, um, you know, groupings of people kind of going every which way. And it, when you have more variety, you have more things going on, more differences within the picture. When you have more unity, you have more similarities. Proportion. The relationship of size between objects big and small 
That's what we're doing. We're finding big and small. Big and small. Big and small. Big and small? Big and small? Big and small. Big and small. You know, to get pictures like this, you hold this bucket up close to the camera and you have your person go into the background, hold their kid, and I'm going to get you. Or you take your fingers right in front of your uh, your camera lens and you hold them up and you try and grab that little balloon in the air. Or actually, that's a giant balloon. And your fingers are the small ones. <clears throat> Movement. Physically moving your eyes through a photograph. Now, a lot of this happens naturally, but photographers and artists do this with in with intentionality. Intentionality. Um, so, this photographer has framed this so that the, the blue angels here, you see the cloud of smoke when it kind of starts and when they're turning around and they capture them, boom, before they like leave the photograph. And these, these pilots are flying at hundreds of miles an hour, okay? They're capturing the water. This is a slow shutter speed, capturing that water stream kind of flow down, but the rocks are still like, look like they're frozen in space, okay? This person jumping off, capturing that image. You know, these lines kind of wrapping around, you know, the eye is moving through this page. Um, the eye is moving, you know, from here, goes down the corner, whoop. You know, the line is moving here, your eye is moving. It starts off on the railing, goes down, oh, there's a person there. And the photographer, the artist is creating that intentionally. They're recognizing it intentionally. They're capturing it so that you can appreciate what they're doing. You know, this these flowers are kind of posed like dancers. Um, this camera kind of cuts this person off. So like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. here is framed in by these people. Everyone's very concerned. Everyone's looking inward. And the eyes are creating that movement. Take a slow shutter speed of a dancer and the dancer's creating the movement. Now you kind of have two very similar things and they're kind of part of the same principle of design, pattern and rhythm. A theme of recurrent events or objects and rhythm is when pattern creates the illusion of movement. So, hmm. let's take a look here. So we have a pattern here. Now if you notice we have very little bit of snowfall here and then it catches more snow at here. Now this is happened naturally and the photographer just recognized this probably when they're on a walk, okay? And snapped it. But the pattern is creating kind of the uniformity and then the rhythm, the increasing rhythm is created by the snowfall. You know, you kind of have a regular rhythm sometimes. Sometimes you have a progressive rhythm or a degressive or regressive rhythm. Um, using rhythm as a background, you know, kind of the Instagram effect. Um, again, next to a window and having like some sort of blinds or something casting a shadow against the face. Even just a stack of tires or some arrows around a turn to make sure people don't crash. Shadows and nature. Maybe there's a bunch of people working in a row. Maybe you're in a class and you see like 10 people sitting all in a line with their heads bent over studying. You know, get them all kind of in the similar pose. You got some great rhythm there and some, you know, this is rhythm. So this is like, you can even kind of pretend like a ball bouncing, like bounce, 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 as that architecture goes into the distance. Now we have balance. There's three kinds of balance that usually people will see. So balance is the equally arranging of elements within a composition. So you have symmetrical balance, okay? Get next to a mirror or find two of the same similar things next to each other. You have asymmetry. So you have um, something that is balanced, okay? This feels balanced, like there's enough um, a dark area here that balances to the larger light area. There's enough of a dark area here to balance the small light area. So you have a, it's asymmetrical. So it's not like a mirror-like image, 
but it feels balanced because there's enough things happening in each area of the composition to make it feel complete and whole. Here you have just straight up symmetry. Here you have asymmetry. You also have radial balance, like the way petals open up on a flower or spokes on a bike. Line up those colored pencils you got. Um, if you got a book, fold them up, put it on a mirror table, um, and you got yourself a sweet composition. Emphasis. There's four kinds of uh, emphasis. And I like to use the acronym CLICK. Contrast, Location, Isolation, Convergence. Click. C-L-I-C. Drawing attention to an area of a photograph. <laughs> got a kid? Put him in front of a light background or make the kid light and the background dark. Like in this photo. You know, isolate them. So maybe there's this person is kind of like framed in by that window and this person is kind of framed in by that window. This person is kind of framed in by that window. Isolated. This this poor red uh, flower in this field of yellow flowers or this lonely yellow flower in this dark sea of gritty rockiness. This isolated person on the end of a road in the middle of nature. These isolated couples in this dark tunnel. Um, these trees. These, you know, so you're isolating. You're just focusing on one thing. Um and trying to remove as many things as possible. This works great for portrait photography. And that um, contrast, location, isolation, convergence. So isolation, you're isolating them. Um, convergence, this is kind of a dual one. The convergence, you have the lines of this road converging on that person. You have the lines of this tunnel converging on this couple. Um, isolating. This person is the only thing in there. Um, also you have location. It is at the direct center of this picture. You know, this couple is at the direct center of that picture. You know, now this isn't at the direct center. This is isolated because it is contrasting the color of everything around it. And what happens is you start to develop these metaphors in your mind. The viewers create metaphors in their mind because they see this isolated little flower. They think it's very lonely. Okay. Or they see, you know, it's okay to be different, right? Being a red flower and a sea of yellow flowers, you know, it's good to be different, right? Um, but these are metaphors that we create and photographers kind of hint at by recognizing this composition out there. Well, I wish all of you the best. I'm very excited to see the, your uh, principles of art presentations come in where you recognize or find or take pictures of these different principles. And I wish you all a great day online. Bye.